Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I just wanted to do this kind of informal video here because I have moved things around down here since I've decluttered. I've decluttered some more and then I brought more in because I had kind of crafts sprawl throughout the house so I decided everything needs to fit in here. Um, but I actually need to move more because uh, we're doing some basement remodeling and I, if, if you have never seen any of my craft room tours and even if you have you may not realize this, this is not actually a room. This is just a corner of my basement and um, I've kind of made makeshift walls by stacking shelves on top of shelves kind of in a um, you know Weasley Harry Potter house type of uh, configuration um, and I've just kind of like it's it's evolved and adapted over the last 10 years and I just kind of like if I need more storage I move things around or I add a shelf or you know a lot of stuff has been picked up on the side of the road or at yard sales um, so you know it has served me very well uh, but since I've done the big kind of KonMari declutter of my house um, we had a lot more options after we got rid of a lot of stuff, especially in the basement. As I um, took probably about five van loads of stuff to Goodwill, um, we realized that we actually had a lot of space here and we were considering putting an addition on our house or buying a bigger house before I, you know, did the KonMari method. It was crazy. I mean, we were considering, you know, buying a bigger house because we had so much crap or I guess we didn't realize how much crap we had we just know we needed more space we didn't need more space we really just needed less stuff and getting rid of a lot of stuff has opened a lot of options um you know to our to our home uh so I'm going to show you where the, the room is now because I think you can get some good ideas about like how to store your your craft supplies but also if you have any ideas for me I would love to hear it because basically um these two walls over here I am I I, I'm going with these walls, these shelves, I'm going to be moving those and all of the binders over there so there can be about another four feet uh, for my husband to work in as he's doing some remodeling. So, um, so I'm thinking that my, my cinder block door shelves <laughs> that I have over here may not be the best use of space. For one thing, I don't sit here and work very often. Uh, sometimes my daughter Lila will sit there. She just did this humongous clay project. She was making tons and tons of like canes, like little slices for like nail art and for to add to her slime. Um, so she had been doing a lot of polymer clay over there, but typically that bench does not get used. I have some stuff underneath it being stored, just some like, but I don't need that whole width. I'd be better off to have probably deeper shelves built to the ceiling there maybe. Um, and it's something I can actually consider now because before it was just so packed. Everything was so packed that I couldn't even consider I couldn't I didn't have the room to work I didn't have I mean I didn't have room to redo anything everything was pretty much as it was so what I'm going to do right now is just do a basic uh little tour of how things are at the moment and I basically almost for my own uh recollection because one thing I regret about doing my big declutter is that I didn't take any before pictures and I think that would on the times where I'm feeling like I haven't made any progress it would be nice to have looked back at those before pictures and say oh yeah you really did it's like in my mind I know I've taken out I've given away carloads of supplies to friends and to uh schools that could use them but it just doesn't feel like I've really it's some days it just doesn't feel like I've done anything you know and I think that's common you get used to whatever you could get used to all this clutter and have it not bother you but you can also get used to how it is now after you've decluttered and feel like you haven't made any progress like you've been spinning your wheels which I know isn't true so take before pictures if you're going to do that um and oh look it's like three and a half minutes in and I haven't even started the tour so let's just get right to that um I am going to grab my camera here handheld so I got rid of a bunch of my vintage wooden paint boxes I actually put them in my shop um, because they are kind of cool and I thought I might be able to actually sell them because I sell in an antique shop. I Last night I moved the um, my paint spinner over here. These are the paints, the craft paints my kids usually use or I use for gel printing. And um, this is a puzzle. A lot of people asked me about this in the last um, craft room tour. This is a puzzle and I found it when I was clearing out the kids game stuff and I loved it so much that I just put it together, used my infamous foam tape and just kind of stuck it there. And behind there I just have like another decoration, a wooden crab that sometimes I use for uh, decorating on the mantle and then a little drawer system. And these are all like stained glass uh, shards and rem remnants for when I do glass fusing, which I don't do very often so it can stay kind of behind those decorative things. I've got an inkwell. I had two. I uh, put one in my shop because it is a vintage thing. And I'm not sure what this thing is, but I like it. Uh, I think it must be some, it's probably some sort of, uh, maybe it's a paperweight, maybe it's a uh, 
kitchen implement. I don't know. It's it's uh, it was my mother-in-law's, and I just like it. Um, up high, I have teaching. Well, I have um, drawing paper, stencils, decorative paper. Like I keep all my my vellum in one of these templates that I've printed and saved, or old boxes that I've taken apart and saved to use as templates. I actually do get in there quite frequently to go after a template. Um, this is all mulberry paper and specialty paper. It's hard to find now. Uh, Art Neko carries it, in, in case you're looking for some. I didn't realize that till recently. These are all my larger stencils, all my 12 by 12 stencils, or oddball shapes that don't fit into the bin that I keep my other stencils in. Um, that's like uh, candles and, um, you know, like the scents, scentsy things, the things that smell good that you put in your candle warmer. They're not necessarily scentsy brand, but I keep them in there. And just sulfate drawing paper for, uh, for different projects. In the crate up there, it's my teaching supplies when I'm going to do workshops, like stuff I have a lot of doubles of um, that I use for workshops. And that's all duct tape in the, in the uh, yellow bin there. And above that, I just have a, like a cardboard folder that I put paintings that I'm going to uh, package for sale. And I have an empty basket up there. I just stuck it there because I didn't know what I was going to do with it. My daughter Lila made that little hook thing and I keep all my tapes ready to go, my masking tapes and whatnot. Jewelry supplies are all there and I just kind of have this Scan and Cut mat hanging there because my Scan and Cut is under there, but I'm going to move that over with my other die cutting stuff I decided uh, recently. Embellishments, beads, um, you know, stuff I don't need to access that often, but there are still my jewelry making supplies and I like to have a lot of variety when I do jewelry and some wire and some foam stamps and stuff like that. That's all stamps. All those binders are all stamps. I, I'm going to go through them while as I move them, I'm going through every binder and seeing if I can pull out some more. I did it once, but I was very conservative because I was worried about being too hasty and regretting getting rid of stuff. But now that I have a better idea of how to declutter, I think I can do a better job. Um, I have some more. I'm um, sorry, it's not very bright there. You can kind of see in there. It's like, whoo, big empty space. That's going to be a room. Um, I just have some like wire, jewelry wires, and then I've got some just like uh, bingo daubers and other splatty dauber things that I use for some mixed media. Uh, and then, you know, buttons and all those binders, all stamps. I know it's crazy. And in there, I've got a couple shoe boxes of stamps, big background stamps in there in uh, some shoe boxes. And my radio, I listen to the NPR a lot. Um, I find that I started, I listen to a lot more radio since I've decluttered. Uh, so over here, I've got canvases up there. My kids tend to use the canvases more than I do. I actually prefer linen painting panels, so I'm going to invest in those once I've used up those canvases. Um, the majority of my brushes are right there, and just some, you know, it's a little bit display, a little bit, you know, odds and ends. Not a really great use of space, but it looks pretty, and that's kind of a nice use of space if things look decent. And I've got my dress form that I don't use very often, but it's really handy if I'm doing a costume or altering something. So I do, um, I do keep it, and it's adjustable, so I can do every size from my daughter's up to me. Um, if I need to alter something. So that's, it's really useful to have. I don't use it that often, but for when I do, I really like to have it. Knitting needles. I think I'm going to declutter my knitting needles um, because I have, a, I have a Denise interchangeable set of knitting and crochet needles that I really like. And um, I think I'm going to really pare down, probably put the extra in my shop. And I need to go through the yarn and pare that down as well because I have two totes and that's a little excessive. Now back there is all my full sheet mat board. Um, and I had at least twice as much, but I donated it a bunch to my uh, elementary school. They said they could use it. I asked them first and because I wanted, because that was all in the empty space. I just kind of showed you, I just showed you a peek of, um, that was all there. And, um, I'm just going to zoom out a little. I can't, I'm as wide as I can. Um, that was all over there. And so I'm like, no, I need to have everything here in my confined into my area. If we're going to do this remodeling project and, um, and I just realized how much am I really going to get through? I don't take framing jobs very often. And, um, it was just a more appropriate amount. Now here, this top shelf, uh, top drawer rather is my kind of common used things, things I don't want to lose, scissor sharpeners, brayers. Um, I use these quite a bit. These are like little things to make faux stitching on projects or to perforate things. I use it a lot for if I have a lot of things like bookmarks. I was selling bookmarks in my shop and rather than price every little bookmark, I just made a sign that had the price on it and then I made tear strips so people could just tear the price and take it with them and I use the perforator for that. So uh, stamp cleaners, stamp handles, all that stuff. This is my excessive jelly print drawer. Um, so I keep my jelly plates, jelly tools, some extra acrylic paints. 
um, you know, yeah, watercolor cards, printmaking cards. It is a bit excessive. I'm not a minimalist by any stretch, even though I'm kind of going towards that. Here I have my nice pastels, nicer pastels, pen pastels, that sort of thing. And in the bottom, I'm my silk screen. And this is kind of like, you know, just larger things. My palette seal for when I'm like working on acrylics or oils and I'm, I'm done for the day, but I don't want to waste the paint. I use that. I do have some stick pastels and whatnot over there and uh, some other big bulky things that don't fit anywhere else basically. I've uh, all my adhesives in that bottom thing, a huge box of glue sticks that I'm still working on and my liquid glues. So that's all going to come forward. I think that's pretty much going to stay where it's stored. Um, I did go through all this stuff before. You know, I've got school supplies in the bottom yellow crate, a hanging file folder of scraps. That's all fabric stuff. Um, fat quarters is generally what I use for projects. So I've got one drawer of fat quarters and the other stuff is just other sewing supplies um, or sheets of felt for different felt crafts. I just, I called it down. I gave the excess to a school teacher, a preschool teacher and, um, and just kind of went from there and you know these are all embellishments embossing folder embossing powders rather glitters that sort of thing and yeah i mean it's, it's i still have a lot but i have really really pared down so i did recently last night kind of move things around now up there i might i'll probably move that basket of stuff that's all like uh party wear it's a it's a it's a line of plates that i really liked i kind of collected they're all um nautical themed and martin's had them all the plates were like between 50 cents and a dollar 50 or three dollars at the most so i got all like a sea urchin sugar bowl and um seahorses and shell plates they're really pretty and i like to bring them out for parties so they're all in that basket i could probably go over with my cooking houseware stuff it doesn't need to be in here but it just it was there was a space on the shelf so that's where it is but that's going to get moved today um embossing folders are in a wine crate and i actually did go through those i am using them so much more now uh and i really like them and i did pull out a couple redundant ones but for the most part i didn't get rid of any of them and i'm just really careful when i do get an embossing folder that it's a all over pattern and something i'm going to use and not like a picture i did get a few of those and i'm like oh i never use these because if i'm just if you're going to emboss a picture that's pretty much all you can do on the card and then it looks kind of blah so um so I learned after having a couple of those and using them that they weren't my cup of tea so much so I decided not to buy any more of those and those are all my thin dyes and those are all my thick dyes I don't have a lot of dyes oh there's a mirror I keep a mirror over here because um sometimes I am like making some earrings and I just want to see how they look or I'm just checking to make sure I don't have lipstick on my teeth before I do a video all those letter sets those were all picked up for like five bucks the uh each um back when there was a i can't remember what it was called custom crops that was the name of the store they clearanced a lot of their thick dyes but i mean i don't have a ton but the ones i do have i use a lot so you know that's that's that there's my big shot it's really it's it's like the first one that came out it's like easily 10 years old it works great the only thing it doesn't work great for is a really detailed like doily dies because i think the the rollers have gotten loose or maybe they just you know weren't made for those those wafer dies weren't around when that machine came out and underneath i have some uh glass plates from the dollar store that i use for watercolor painting especially if i'm trying out um some new paints and i don't want to commit them to my palette yet and uh, i moved my spray inks over here um and just some colored pencils that basically don't fit on my colored pencil shelf so i really need to take a hard look at how much of that stuff i have postal scale um sculpey thing this is probably way more this is way more in depth than i intended to go but those are uh, my laminator laminating pouches my gypsy for my cricket machine because what happened was um i had the little cricket and um then i got the bigger cricket for christmas uh, from my parents and this is many years ago many many years ago this is an older model and so um, I uh, I think I asked for a gypsy my husband got me a gypsy which was like this device I don't think they make them anymore but you could hook all your cartridges to it and have all your cartridges on a handheld device that you could take around with you so then I lent all I lent my small cricket and my my all my physical cartridges to my friend Kathy and I just kept the gypsy and then if she bought a cartridge she let me hook it into my gypsy so we got to share our cartridges that way it was really handy and then she ended up getting her own cricket so she sent me back my cricket that's why it's another so I 
some little one over there. Um, and so now she has one and she's still borrowing all my physical cartridges, which is fine. Uh, sharing is caring. But um, but yeah, I, I have that. I haven't updated anything because I'm afraid that my Gypsy won't work if I update because they don't make it anymore. But um, but yeah, I mostly actually use my Cricut with my laptop and sure cuts a lot of software for cutting fonts and stuff. And I save my, my uh, scan and cut machine only for cutting out stamped images so that I can conserve the blades a little bit. It's excessive. I completely, um, completely know. So I cleaned off my table for the most part last night. I just had a few things on the end, but I really wanted the table just cleared off. And so what I did was I took the spinner that was in the corner, I put it over there. That's where those purple shelves were. And that's all paper back there, pretty much paper and uh, ribbons and stuff in the drawers to keep them from getting dusty. And I have some, you know, paints and whatnot in those, um, those pull-out drawers. Still, still a lot of things. But I moved my markers up here because I really wanted stuff off my desk. I wanted my big table to be cleared off. So if I want to pull out a big piece of fabric or I want to cut a mat or I want to do whatever, I want that clear. Um, making things easier to clean is better than making them easier to access, which is something I learned doing the KonMari method. And uh, and, it, and it's really true. I took that um, that advice to heart for my kitchen, and it made a huge difference for my enjoyment of cooking because I hated to cook, but now I don't mind it. I'll put on the radio and take my time, and uh, and I enjoy it a lot more. That box in the middle is simply holding cards that are packaged and priced and ready to go to the shop. So I just grab that box on my way out the door anytime I'm going into town and I can drop things off. And watercolor palettes, those are matte board scraps in that purple bin. And then I've got some watercolor pads that I can easily access, whoops, I'm sorry, by, um, by just reaching in. And I just moved this stuff in there because that was, again, some sprawl that had been in the empty part of the basement that I had gone through everything. It's artwork that I didn't want to keep. I burnt so much artwork that it was old that I didn't really like um, <laughs> because I'm just like, I don't have space for it. I don't, I'm never going to look at it again. I just want to get rid of it. And you know, I have other craft room tours. If you want to see what's in all those bins, if you watch my KonMari declutter, you're going to see exactly what's in every drawer. Um, yeah, I got some colored pencils up there. I've de-stashed more colored pencils because my friend Kathy was looking for a set. I'm like, oh, have I got a deal for you? Here you go, free. And, uh, and it freed up a little more room. I probably should go through all that white card stock, but I, I know I'll use it up, so I'm not going to just get rid of it because I can always use it for gel printing. Um, I have definitely settled on my favorite card stocks over the years. For card bases, I love the Recollections Heavyweight. For alcohol marker coloring, I love the, um, the Nina um, Classic Crest, and those are two my, my pretty much my two must-haves. Other than that, I'm not that picky, you know, I'll use Bristol for marker, like for blending marker or hot press watercolor paper. Uh, those, I, I don't need to have special cardstock for that because I have the other stuff in my watercolor. Um, and yeah, you just kind of get to know what you like and then, I'll, but I'll use it up rather than throw it out. And under there is framing supplies and packaging supplies. And I do still have candle making supplies under there that I want to get rid of so I can move all of that, all of those big, um, you know, portfolios under there next to my other portfolios and mat board. It can tuck up right underneath that bench, I think, and that would work out pretty well. Uh, so basically, I just wanted to give you that update. I do have more in-depth tours um, on my channel. And I just want to show you this because I'm going to change it and then I'll show you again after I change it. I hope you found this useful. Maybe you got a few ideas on how to store some of your stuff. Um, but honestly, my best advice is that it's so much easier to organize if you have less stuff. So before you start storing things, before you start reorganizing, declutter and then reorganize. You'll find that you don't really need any extra storage solutions and um, it'll be a lot easier and you'll feel so much more peace and breathing room when you do that. That's pretty much all I wanted to share. It's a little longer than I planned. I hope you found it useful and until uh, next time, happy crafting!